Welcome to our Monday Night Memories. All these guys <laughs> provided great memories for Purdue basketball fans. It's not possible it's been 50 years, so we won't even say it's been 50 years. This is the 1974 NIT champions. And for those of you that are that uh, think that the NIT wasn't a big deal, it was in 1974. This is a basketball team that was worthy. Uh, it could have made a run to the Final Four in today's 40 or excuse me, 68 team NCA tournament, but we'll talk about that. I want to introduce folks, and this is going to be always a challenge when we have a full house. But I want to also thank our sponsor uh, and our my co partner, co co uh, anchor here with Nate Barrett, Chariot Auto Group, celebrating 50 years. Amazing, 50 wow. years. You guys get win the NIT championship, and and uh, Chariot Automo Group, Automotive Group. Uh, it, it's 50 years in Greater Lafayette in 2024. Frank. And Don Trout, you probably uh, know that they, they were friends way back in the day. Everybody was a friend of uh, Nate's grandpa uh, and, and all that they've done for Purdue Sports over the year and, of course, our community. All right, guys, our our panel, our, I would say our esteemed panel, but I'll say at least our panel. And I'm going to introduce and then we'll kind of go around. John Garrett, uh, of course, the uh, All Big Ten Center from the uh, from Peru, Indiana, or Peru, Indiana. He joins us uh uh, as well. Mike Steele, and we're kind of going around the horn. I'm not exactly sure how it will look on the Zoomcast. Mike Steele, uh, the pride of Robinson, Illinois, number 41. Purdue hasn't had all that many 41s over there, and they've never had anybody quite like Mike. That we know. Uh, but Mike Steele, a longtime coach uh, and, of course, a key role player on this team. Dick Satterfield, Dick Satterfield, the a walk-on on this team, but contributed in a, in a lot of ways was a junior, I believe, from Hagerstown, Indiana. Uh, and, of course, is back in Mackey Arena a lot, a lot as well. Frank Kendrick, Frank, uh, all Big Ten, uh, a NBA champion the following year with the Golden State Warriors. And, of course, Frank joins us from the Indianapolis area. And, and uh, Frank, uh, they we, we always have fun with Frank, and we've had such a good long-term relationship with Frank over the years. Uh, Nate Baird, of course, in the middle. Bruce Parkinson. Also an All Big Ten level and Purdue Hall of Fame member, as is as is Frank Kendrick, and a uh, all time assist leaders that still stands. Yes, so far. Yeah, Braden Smith, <laughs> uh, who, is, who who I know is near and dear to Bruce Parkinson, may challenge that if he stays for four yeah. years. May not either, and and of course Bruce came within a shadow of getting a triple du triple double in his Purdue career. Braden did. May get there someday. I wouldn't be shocked uh, by the time he's done. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. But Bruce Parkinson, of course, the point guard on this team that uh, led won the 1974 NIT championship. Jerry Nichols in in transit. And, of course, Jerry from Greenwood, Indiana, uh, a defensive stopper, a starter on this uh, uh, basketball team that made kind of a – made a, uh, he held. Let's just say this: He held David Thompson to two points in the first half, uh, in, with a with I think a nose. Uh, you'd had a broken your nose five days earlier, if my memory serves. One of the great defenders, but all around players at Purdue, and of course Randy Shields, also a staple in Purdue world, uh, the pride of Milwaukee. Uh, I think you still hold the uh, as a freshman set the Mackey Arena rebound record at twenty six. Um, and uh, the and of course has been around, and still comes. So we see him all the time in Mackey Arena, as we do uh, a lot of these gentlemen from time to time when they let him into the the building. So, all right, John Garrett, since you since you've made the most effort to get here, or at least we're so glad to have you. I'm going to start with you, John. You know, you go back and look 50 years ago. This was a team in '74. Yes, Bruce Parks had a lot to do with uh, igniting that offensive engine, but you guys could flat score with anybody uh and uh, there weren't more there's only one basketball at a time and bruce passed it out to frank and to john and to to jerry and everybody else was in there but talk about just looking back at it now for 50 years john and what you what uh what memories you take from that season oh we just that was just the best year uh for me at purdue uh i don't know about the rest of you guys but it probably was but uh, we just, you know, we all got together well. We meshed really well. And uh, I just thought we had a, a great season. I, I think the main thing was that we got along so well. There was a lot of joking going on, a lot of <laughs> playing spades and hearts and all those good things going on the bus. But uh, 
we we got along well like you say we we could we could play yeah and you could uh that's true john garrett war number 55 uh he doesn't remind you a lot of lance jones these days but john could 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 run up and down there up and down the court uh for a big guy 611 and like he said he could shoot it in like nobody's business no, nobody's business nate i'm gonna fire back at you and he, we're gonna kind of go around the horn but uh, ask questions as you go my friend you know as we were looking at the, your record guys i wanted to start off maybe with this one to to frank uh frank take us back to uh the february 11th loss at Iowa in triple overtime. Maybe tell us about that game. Iowa had been losing, but they'd been close with a couple of games prior to you guys heading out there. But that one kind of jumped out at me as a game I'd like to hear about, a triple overtime game on the road. Oh, it broke my heart uh, because I didn't like Iowa. I, well, I didn't like anybody who wasn't on my team. Yeah, but I didn't like Iowa, and, and the way we lost the game, I thought our guys played well. I I couldn't say a negative thing about or to one of my teammates. Uh, I just thought that a call here or there that they got that we should have had would have made a big difference. And who knows that, how much history it would have changed had we won that game and where that would have put us uh, in terms of going into the tournament and, and what we would have done with that. So uh, who knows? So right now, I, I, I'm sitting. We're sitting in better shape than than, than all the others who was in the NCAA tournament and uh, got beat. Yeah, we ended the season on a win, a championship, and we did it with class people, high class people, high 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 class teammates, high high class coaches, people who you wanted to go out and bust your butt for. That that's the type of people you had. Uh, that you were playing for and playing with. So, uh, it was it was hard to lose because I hate losing. Coming from a family of mine of nine, uh, five boys, four girls, I was told I shouldn't lose. Finance part one, please. Finance yeah. part one. And when, when you look at when you look at that, also uh, we're still selling cars, and that's part of the deal in this whole. <laughs> well, um, I want to ask the two coaches. Uh, uh, or coaches on the floor, and, and, and I'm going to put Mike Steele and Bruce Parkinson in, in a lock you guys together a little bit in terms of Fred Schaus. I'm going to start about uh, what kind of coach was Fred. Uh, you know, obviously came to Purdue as a former GM of the Lakers, a coach in the NBA, and we had a number of runner up uh, uh, finishes with the, against the Boston Celtics and Bill Russell for all those years. But uh, I'll start with you, Bruce, and then go to Mike in terms of uh, what what fr coach what did Coach Schaus, you know, it was in his just in his second year, uh, what he brought to the table and and how he managed you uh, you uh, heard of interesting personalities from time to time. How did you, how'd that work? He was a great man. I mean he he was a great coach, and obviously his history uh, was something that we all respected and wanted to hear his stories and seemed like uh, I was thinking about uh, when we were in LA and also New York um, coach Schaus having been in those cities multiple times in his role with the Lakers always took us to the best restaurants uh, we we traveled well um, he uh, he treated us maybe with more respect than than we deserve because uh, <laughs> I, I know there were some times I should not have started in the second half of a game and uh, <laughs> with the way I played in the first half. But Coach Schaus, uh, if he believed in you, uh, you just felt like uh, you just felt like you could do anything. And I think he made us all feel that way, that that we had somebody on our sideline that that gave us uh, an advantage and. Uh, he was, uh, and as a person, as a father, as a grandfather, as a husband, uh, he also taught us a lot just by, uh, just by his behavior. And we were really lucky. I, I remember when uh, Coach George King stepped down and, and uh, Coach Schaus took the job. He got on a small plane and, and flew around to those of us who were seniors that year. It was the first time I had a chance to meet him. And I'm thinking uh, when he was in our my 
our house, it was like, this guy's a legend and how lucky we were to, uh, to be able to part of, of his time at Purdue. Mike Steele, obviously you coached at, the, at uh, high division one level and, or, and, uh, and played for him. What, what, what did you learn? What were your takeaways from him as a coach and maybe also how he coached this team? Because I don't want to focus only on Jerry's injury against Hawaii, but you guys had to adjust throughout the course of the season. You had some challenges throughout the course of the year. Uh, what did you learn from, from uh, uh, Fred Schaus as a coach? You know, I, looking back on it, and I've said this numerous times, I think Coach Schaus was probably the most misunderstood or, or most, most maligned coach because – you had to win the Big Ten to go, and if yeah. if we would have been if we would have been coaching now and the teams we had, we'd have gone to the NCAA tournament every year, every single year. And, and, and my sophomore year, which is the year we're talking about, we were in the top ten in the country. We would have been a two or three seed somewhere, right. and we were good enough that we could have maybe gone, you know, a <laughs> long way. But I thought Park made a good point. I remember. Uh, and I used to tell people all the time, guys my, the coach played with me, play, you know, that I coached, it only takes a little bit more to go first class. Yeah. And Fred Schaaf, you know, <laughs> my, my man Eugene Parker, yeah. God bless him. Eugene, when, when we would go travel, uh, you know, and all those guys, they'd order. You could order whatever you wanted the, the day before the game. And I got all those guys to order shrimp cocktail. They wouldn't touch it. But I eat shrimp cocktail. Fred was a uh, he was he was he expected a lot of you, but he uh, you know he knew the game. He was a great coach. Yeah, and and uh, you guys played an up tempo style without question, and that uh, it was a fun brand. I mean, you think about Purdue basketball coming off the George King days and you know the team that went to the final four and went to the national championship game with rick mountain herman gilliam and billy keller led the nation in scoring you guys brought that same brand of basketball that uh, absolutely and fred chow seemed to be very much about that that fast break style and yes you wanted to defend but uh, uh that was a that was a big style from that standpoint jerry we got you back are you back there you hear me yeah, yeah, I'm good. I don't know. We hit a dead spot or something. We're down close to Louisville right now, so you're, you're all good. All right, Jerry. I I'm want to ask, go ahead. I want to no, ask just, you about your, your your defensive acumen. Obviously, you brought other things. You I I looked it up against Iowa in that in, in the triple overtime game. I didn't know. I'd forgotten that you'd hit the uh, hit the shot to to send it to a third overtime in the last second. But uh, and obviously you could score. You had lots of guys and your lot of teammates that could score as well. But talk about your role as a defensive player, but also your role in this team. And you know that that there was a lot a lot of toughness on this group. I mean, you guys not only had you had to come back uh, one of your biggest comebacks in the game that you broke your nose against uh, Michigan, where you're down to Campy Russell and Steve Grody and company by double digits in the second half, come back. Got to defend to do that, but talk about the, a little bit of the grit of this team and what it brought to the table. Hey, stick! Before yeah. you do that, tell, tell them we threw the ball to you in that Iowa game. Yeah, Mike. Oh, is that who Mike? St <laughs> hey. You know, I thought I thought it was Parkinson, but you know, it might have been Steely. Who knows? <laughs> no, Parkinson's on the bench. Yeah. No, you know, it, it was a situation where we had uh, a bunch of teammates that were selfless and would do whatever they had to do to help the team. And, and that was really my role because uh, we didn't need a whole lot of other scoring besides uh, Garrett and Kendrick and, and Parkinson because those guys were always in double figures and stuff. And and uh, I just took it upon myself to not only guard my own man, but Frank Kendrick's man too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, That's my man. You know, That's my man. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> flying no, pencil. no, no, Frank's my Look man. Out. He, out, he and I are you. like brothers. <laughs> yeah, we are. Love you, man. I yeah. love you. Yeah. So, but anyway, you know, I took it upon myself to try to try to guard uh, the other, uh, you know, the top scorer on the other team, 
uh, most generally, regardless of what the position was. And I know there were a few games where Parkinson had to guard their best player and stuff, but he and I, we really focused on that part of the game so we could help the team. Um, there were a lot of a lot of guys that, that I guarded that, you know, I think I was six All-Americans that I was able to guard that year. And um, I think it was a, a really nice thing to be able to, um, you know, hold those guys to to their average or lower, mostly lower as far as I was concerned. David Thompson was probably – the most notarized guy that uh, that I had to uh, to try to defend, and, and to be honest with you, he wasn't the one that was really the toughest for me to guard. Um, that guy was Campy Russell yeah, from Michigan because Campy Campy was as quick as I was, about two inches taller, and, and weighed about fifty pounds more. <laughs> so um, he was a load, and he's the one that broke my nose the, the week before I uh, we played North Carolina State. And I had to guard David Thompson, but uh, no, I, I mean. Again, we were all selfless. We did what we had to to, uh, you know, make the team better. Uh, our, like everybody said, the, tem- the chemistry that we had and the, and the drive that we had to be successful was was in my mind unmatched. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of good teams from from Purdue over the years, but if anybody had any better chemistry than we did, I'm not so sure. You know who would be. But uh, no, it, it was it was a great four years for us, and uh, of course, the '74 NIT championship was the the icing on the cake. Uh, too bad we couldn't have played in the NCAA tournament because I, I I don't know. I've often thought the only team we might not have been able to beat at that time for the championship would have been UCLA. Yeah, never. Uh, go ahead, Frank. Uh, so you never know. You know, we can uh, we can assume that. But yeah. we never know unless we actually played that baby. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I think Frank would play it now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would love to. <laughs> would you pass it, Frank? <laughs> Always to the basket. <laughs> right, pass it. Frank has always been direct. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I hey, go ahead. Uh, this next one is for Dick, and then we'll let Randy follow up on it. I asked Frank about a loss. I want to ask you guys about a couple of wins, Dick. January 5th, an overtime win at Mackey over Michigan State, 77-75. And then the 21st of January, you guys beat number 14 Michigan in Mackey in overtime again, 85-84. Maybe Dick and then Randy, take, take us through your memories of those games. I, I remember – well, the Iowa game is the one I really remember the best, but uh, we won't talk about that anymore. Well, we will. He had 17 <laughs> points. 17. Yeah. And he, did anybody ever know Dick said I, – Dick and I have a standing joke because every time I ever have my – Dick and Mike are always nice enough to provide some analysis of Purdue basketball on one of my shows. And, and Dick's very good. Mike is, you know, so-so. But Dick – every time yeah. I said Dick scored 17 points, 9 of 10 free throws against Iowa. But go ahead, Dick, not to interrupt that was yeah, what I remember about that game, by the way, the last thing is I should have passed it to John because he would have never missed that shot, and I tried to take that shot myself. Anyhow, <laughs> I, definitely remember, I, I definitely remember those games uh, because the, the first game you're talking about against Michigan State, we got way, way down, Yeah, and uh, and we came back to, to win that game. Michigan State was pretty good. They had uh, Terry Furlow, as I remember, and uh, Lindsey Harrison. They were a good team. And then Michigan, of course – and, and Jerry, it's interesting you say that because people always said to me, who's the best player you ever played against? I thought it was Campy Russell. I thought he's even better than, uh, than yeah. David Thompson. But, um, and, uh, and then, of course, Steve Grody to this day is a very good friend of mine. I was even talking to Steve earlier today. But those were great wins. And, uh, you know, I think we were the best team in the Big Ten that year. Uh, but, you know, losing at Iowa and then we still, that, that call that Art White made on Bruce Rose against oh. Indiana still just drives me crazy. Yeah, but it's funny because Fred Chow, she reads some of that stuff and and Fred was never shy about being he would be subtle initially if you read some of his comments. And I, I knew him over the years, but uh, not a friend of not a friend of Bob Knight's, but also not a friend of uh, Art White. And, and there's still that picture in Indianapolis Star, I believe, the morning after that game of him basically him scowling at, at that call. What was the situation, Dick? I mean, did, did he call him out under the basket for a foul? No, it was called, oh. and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but it was out in the middle of the court. It was a loose ball. 
And they called Bruce for a, Rose for a foul on Laskowski. You know, he wasn't going to miss those free throws. We lost by two. It was just a horrible game. And I do remember the other thing I remember about that IU game was Park just absolutely destroyed Quinn Buckner. It yeah. wasn't even a fair fight. <laughs> 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 Alan, that uh, that IU game. I mean, you know, uh, they uh, they were really good, uh, as yeah. as you know. But um, that particular game, what leading into that foul, Dick's talking about. I had just stolen the ball and uh, and drove down and and put us up by one. Yes, and we're playing defense inside the last ten seconds, and uh, uh, I think I'm maybe guarding <laughs> Buckner on the one side of the court. And Wilkerson exchanges with Laskowski and Rosie anticipated that pass from the guy I was guarding over to him. And there was no foul at all. And you were talking mm -hmm. about, and so Laz makes two free throws with virtually, I think, two seconds to go. And uh, Coach Schaus chased the referees to their locker room. And uh, I've never, never seen or heard of that. And I wish uh, Rosie was on the call today because, uh, uh, that that guy was one tough sob. I mean, oh, he was yeah. absolutely the as tough a player as there was in a, in America. And uh, Rosie uh, Rosie was uh, had tears uh, in the locker room afterwards. That it, uh, it was just it was just awful. They took it from us. Hey, Steely, tell yeah. the story about Dave Winfield, the toughest player he ever played against. I was at a fundraiser at uh, Cal Ripken deal and. They were honoring uh, Dave Winfield as one of the Hall of Fame guys. And I went up to him and I introduced myself and, you know, I said we had great games, whatever. And I, he didn't obviously recognize me. But he says, did you play with that uh, that guy named Rose? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, yeah. He goes, let me tell you something. He said, now this is Dave Winfield. He, he says, uh, I uh, I came across the lane and I hit him as hard as I've ever hit anybody. And this guy looked at me and he said, and I won't throw in the four letter words, but he said, is that all you got? And he, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the only thing that Dave Winfield said he remembered about the games and what, with, you know, with everybody with Purdue, but he said, he looked at me and said, that's it. That's all you got. And that's how <laughs> 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 and Bruce, to be fair, Bruce was the pride of uh, Kokomo, Indiana, and came to Purdue as also a football player, as you guys know, as a tight end, right? And it would have been a hellacious one. Uh -huh. uh, he was, but uh, he he's in Florida, and he, the internet apparently doesn't go to Florida, even though Dick would tell you differently. Uh, he is in Florida, and he said and he, and he sends his regrets, but I did yeah. hear from Bruce, and uh, uh, and. Uh, I think I would love to love to connect with him because there are so many. He had such a – you talk about, of course, you guys played all before the day of the three-point shot, but he had a good mid-range good mid -range jumper. I think he could bank it in from time to time. And uh, he was one tough hombre. Randy Shields. Hey, John, 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 I'll, John, I'll bet you got hey, some good stories about Alan, him. Alan, before we get off Bruce Rose, see if you guys agree with this. I, For me, I felt like – what made that year so special was the difference in Bruce Rose and David Luke. I thought that mm -hmm. yeah. David Luke, who never really was close to any of us, his when we were freshmen, he came back and he became a great, a great teammate. And he, mm -hmm. Bruce Rose, you know, w was never really, I guess, dedicated <laughs> like he needed to be. But once Carol, once he got married, and Bruce realized that he wasn't the guy in charge. And <laughs> he'd get in shape. And I thought those two guys were the difference in us having a good team and having a chance to have a great team. Great point, Mike. That's, that's, great. that's, that's well, a great point. Great point. I, I, got, I got a great Read story. Down, Gary, go ahead, and then we'll go back to Randy. Go ahead. Alan, let me tell you one quick story. No, no I just did that. Uh, great, great point. I got a great story to tell you about David Luke. So, oh, before you go to hold on, Dick. Go hold Luke, on for let, one let second, finish, John Garrett. Finish, you're, you're, you're at the floor and go to Dick. Okay. John, go okay. ahead. Do you remember? You're, okay, you remember when Rosie decked that guy in front of the bench in Hawaii? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my. The enforcer. <laughs> the enforcer. Uh, bad news bars. He, he, he decked he, bad news bars. He, he hit him in the back of the head, and he went. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. Oh. That was after. Uh, uh, that was after what what precipitated down. it, though? What? Who? Who? No, who did Gilbert, getting picked on? 
Gilbert called him uh, Tire Iron because he beat up a kid, one yeah. of his teammates with a tire iron. Gilbert kept calling him. Yeah. I was sitting right next to Gilbert. I said, Tommy, you got to be quiet now. And all of a sudden, all uh, all hell broke loose. Oh, yeah. Well, I think, this is Randy. I think what happened, though, is didn't uh, somebody, one of our players, get hit in the back of the head? By one of their henchmen, it wasn't tire iron. It was somebody. No, else. it wasn't tire iron. It wasn't tire it, iron. He hit. He okay. When, when this guy came in, this guy came into the game, and first time down threw an elbow at Rosie. Yeah. And then we went down offense. Then went went down the other way. Yep. Uh, and 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 this guy threw an elbow. I mean, a second time, like yeah. it's like the second or third time down the floor is yeah. right in front of Dick on the bench because right. yeah. the uh, Hawaii uh, sports page had this on the front page that Rosie, like Frank said, had nailed this guy into the seat next to Dick, and Dick's face is just you know <laughs> it's like what's going to happen here? There's going to be a riot or something, and that guy didn't. I mean, he messed with the wrong guy. Yeah, he, he, good, remember, he, he was done. He was done. You remember <laughs> when he walked off with his hands above his head like Rocky Balboa? <laughs> <laughs> I used to tell oh. that. Oh, God. I acted like they wanted a, a piece of Rosie. I said, You'd rather tackle a wild bear with a feather than the man. Absolutely, Frank. <laughs> Dick, go <laughs> ahead. Let me tell you my David Luke story. Let me tell you my David Luke story. So, Steve Grody is from Cincinnati. And remember, David Luke was from Cincinnati. Purcell High, they went to, Purcell High School. They went to rival high schools, Purcell versus Elder. And so Steve Grody is a freshman at Michigan. And they're doing the scouting report on Purdue. And they said, hey, you can just let David, you know, you can let Luke shoot. He can't shoot. So Steve Grody said he raised his hand and he said to Johnny Orr, he said, where's this, where's this Luke from? And they said, well, he's from Cincinnati. And Steve Grody said, he can shoot. <laughs> yeah. you can shoot. Yeah. Now, my my only comments earlier about Bruce Rose uh, was, "Hey, Bruce, I had to say to him, why didn't you play football? You know, we all could have had a little more playing time if Bruce had played football." But <laughs> to the point, to the point, he was an all stater, and you'd want him in a in a bar. If you walked in the wrong bar, you wanted Bruce on, on your right hand side. Because he was the the guy that would make sure you got out of that same bar, that's for sure. But uh, I do agree with everybody that uh, I think after he got married, he lost his dad his sophomore year, and yeah, I think right. he he really focused in and uh, it was a hell of a player. But um, great guy guy. and a great guy. And I, I and today, you know, uh, Bruce will give you a shirt off his back, which he would have done in our day too. Um, but he's just a hell of a, a guy, and he's got a real soft side as well. But, he, he, again, great teammate. Um, but a lot of the comments that were made about some of the games and everything, uh, as you can see, we were a very compatible group, and people were willing to adjust to their roles. And I think everybody enjoyed the fact that we were able to win. And it didn't matter always who did what. We figured out a way to do that. Right. And that's what really worked for us. And, and people were selfless. I mean, they really – yeah, they really – really gave up of themselves to be able to help the team win. And I think that's really what winning teams do. They figure a way out. And I think even this year's team, they're figuring a way out of every predicament they're thrown into. And, and that's a learning experience. And we figured it out. And I, I think we could have gone a long way if we had been in the proper NCAA brackets and that, that was allowed in our day. But uh, again, as you can see with the, joking around and everything else that's who we are who we were and it really was a, a lot of fun for all of us on the team no matter how much you played or how many injuries you had or whatever happened everybody was there for each other and we just had a lot of fun winning don't you think this team reminds you of of this team at purdue when i watch them play and i've had a chance to go to some practices and listen to them get on each other and i'm and, and have fun i they remind me a lot of what we had the opportunity to do when we were sophomores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. They're pretty loose. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and talented. Uh, and Bruce, got take, take us, uh, take us through Bruce, uh, the uh, environment in Mackey that season. Uh, you, you had a very strong home record, uh, but just the fans and the environment in Mackey throughout the season. Well, um, 
walking out of that tunnel, uh, you know, most, some of us were from small schools. Uh, walking out of that tunnel was, uh, it was just amazing. And of course, it was soon after Mount uh, played and the atmosphere that, uh, that he created. But, um, you know, talking, Mike and I were talking this weekend, and one of the things he pointed out, and I actually looked at it, of the schedule that we played, um, we played against NC State, number one team in the country, um, Michigan, we already talked about, Providence we beat, Michigan we beat once, uh, North Carolina, uh, who I think was seventh going into the oh. NIT, yeah. we beat them. Uh, we played Indiana, who, uh, again, I'm looking at uh, uh, the final uh, the final AP uh, standings. Indiana uh, finished ninth. We finished 11th. North Carolina finished 12th, and Utah was 15th. Yeah. So we had six. Uh, we we had six five or six games in the top 15, and won four of them. And Mike, I I had time because you know this team this year has had the most incredible schedule that we yeah. that any team has ever had anywhere probably and Mike pointed out that hey don't forget those teams that that we played and and won four times uh against yeah i right. try to get the education right. time i see you park i know that's that's a full time <laughs> job that's a full time job <laughs> i i want i'll throw this yeah. out you know uh, before you go go ahead frank go ahead the thing about Coach shouts all the confidence that he gave people. He believed. He believed in. When he believed in, he believed in, and uh, and he would let you go, and uh, he would let me go. He'd tell me, "You get that damn thing, you go with it." Go score. Yeah, yeah go score. score. He said, "You can go." He said, "You remind me of Elgin Baylor." Yeah. And I said, "Okay." And he shot it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he always so, told me to pass it to Frank. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it, it, it was fun. I mean, it was, you know, we the, the way we played. Because I remember when we played NC State, we would go back and we talked about in the scouting report how how high David Thompson could jump, what a jumping jack he was, and we were like, yeah, sure he can jump, yeah, sure he can jump. And I remember that shot. Somebody took a shot at the at the other end of the tunnel, at that basket, and the ball hit the rim. And the, he just rolled. Everybody was right down there, and, and uh, getting ready to jump and go get the ball. And everybody and jumping. I was in there too. And all of a sudden, this one little black arm just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I looked up. And I saw it by itself, and I was like, "Boy, you gonna bring the rain?" Yeah. But okay, hey. I, gotta, I gotta bring it. Yeah. Hey, hey Alan, this is this is Randy. If I could for a minute. Let's let's talk about that because we played during the ten years when you couldn't stuff. Yeah, no dunks, yeah. no dunks, no dunks, no dunks whatsoever. Yeah, and that was put in because of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Of right, course. that was in our high school days as well as our college days. If we'd have had a three-point line, Big John would still be playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> The other, the other thing I wanted to bring up is when we were talking about Fred Chouse, uh, he was called the, the Stomper. Yes, he was. And if you remember, yeah. and, and at the time, Fred got a couple of technicals for standing up too much. So if everybody remembers, they actually put a seatbelt on the coach's seat. Do we, everybody remember that? I think yeah. that might have been. That was either the year, year or the year after. That's right. And he and he wore a seatbelt. Um yeah. Yeah, but but he always wore great shoes, uh, you know, <laughs> some kind of slip on with tassels. But that that stomper would come down, man. So he figured it out. We all did, I guess, to have a manager with water or something at the end of the bench so yeah, he could get right, up, yeah. stomp, and go down to the end of the bench and then come right on back. But he couldn't stand up. That's right. Yeah. It, exactly, because otherwise it was a technical. So you know, those were some of the funny things in our time period were uh, both no dunking and uh, uh, no no coach could stand up and uh, argue with the reps at the time. And a, re a reoccurring theme, you guys, as we are is evidenced by the first X number of minutes on this podcast, uh, no one lacked confidence. But you did have some moments that had to challenge you. I mean, you had the tough loss at Indiana. We talked about the Iowa game. 
Mike Robinson beat you in a last second shot at Michigan State. You're down at halftime against North Carolina in the by I think double digits, or you were at one time in that game. And again, that was a made for TV game. I mean, that's why they put the two best teams in the NIT. If I if, if that may, may be a slight overstatement, but probably not. Remember those games were on CBS, and yeah. and it was Purdue North Carolina game number one. And of course, you guys came back in the second half. But just talk about, I mean, and maybe John, I'll start with you, but you guys feel free to pipe in on on just that confidence level and the confidence you had in yourselves. Was it a quiet one? Was it something in the locker room that you talked about? Uh, was that Fred Schauser getting after you? What what uh, kept you guys knowing that, you, you know, you had some tough moments that year and you had some things that didn't happen. But what got you through the second half of the North Carolina game and then and then catapulted you through a very good – and you lost the last second shot at Utah, right, on New Year's night. So you you, you lost, some, yeah. uh, lost some tough games. John, I'll start with you, but any, any thoughts there on uh, – on what kept your confidence level, or what? Or are you guys just not smart enough to know any different? Tell tell me what it was. Well, uh, well that's, that's probably a little true, also. But, but <laughs> I, I think that you know we we got a few bad breaks in that first half, and uh, sometimes I I always wondered. I thought you know sometimes these referees, like old Charlie Fowdy and those guys, I said they they don't know that this is our home court. You know what, yeah. what are you doing giving the, giving the bad guys all the breaks? But that seemed to happen to us in that first half. And we, and we we knew we could play them. Uh, we knew we could play them hard, and we did. And we still won that game if it would if it wouldn't have been for uh, 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 Bert, Tommy Burleson goaltended last shot. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, that was smart. I've got a I got a picture of it in my mind, and I'll guarantee you it was goaltender. Then it was Tommy that did it, and they didn't call it. And and you know we we'd get a foul on us for breathing in the wrong direction. It, uh, sometimes it just it, it upsets you a little bit. And at half we came back out and uh, uh, we had them in our pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was our game. We really did, I thought. Tom Burleson was a skinny version of Zach. He's the first guy I ever knew that was seven foot four that played. And I don't know if that's fair or not, yep. but he was one of the first He's guys. That uh, that was out there. Anybody else thought about just those moments where you had to? And again, uh, well, not you know, Jerry had the injury against against Hawaii that ended his season in the quarterfinals of the tournament. You you had to you know you I think you beat Jacksonville in the in the semifinal, beat Utah, a team that had beaten you and Mike Sojourner and company. But talk about just about uh, I, I don't imagine that there were any moments from heaven where where the Lord came down and told you you were going to win, so to speak. But what what got you through? I mean, was it just a general confidence? You guys were all. Uh, like I said, seemed to be pretty confident guys over the years. But what what got you through, Mike Steele? I'm gonna throw it to you first. I'm gonna make somebody talk. Go ahead. No, you know, uh, one of the neat things is we were in New York for two weeks. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Park and I roomed together, <laughs> and we had so much confidence going into the Carolina game. I don't know if we took a change of clothes. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we. That's been always been weekend. the story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the longer we were there. And it was so neat because we, we had a chance. This is when the Knicks were so good with all the superstars. We had a chance to go to practice and watch those guys and see, you know, yeah. they had the same amount of fun that, you know, they were playing horse for $20 or whatever. I mean, it was just really neat. But the longer we were there, I think that we all just kind of kept thinking that, you know, we knew we had a good team, but we weren't wrapped up with like, you know, we – We've got to go win a championship. We just went and we were so fortunate to still be playing. Yeah. And just kind of kept playing. Yeah. I think that's a great way to say anybody hey, else hey. Say any comments there? Go ahead. Alan, uh, the, uh, the, the roster, they, they were the number one seed. Yeah. And so as Mike said, we packed for the weekend. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and that was absolutely true. We had to buy clothes. <laughs> Mike and I did. <laughs> listen, listen, this roster, Walter Davis, Daryl Elston, Bobby Jones, probably yeah, an NBA Jones. Hall of Famer, Mitch Kupchak, and Tom Lagarde. Yeah. They have guys that played yeah. on the Olympic team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys so, that play Pokemon outside in the park. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the one thing that, that, that I think people don't really maybe would remember about this team is having Frank Kendrick and John Garrett. Yeah. John could score on anybody. He absolutely handed it to Burleson. Yeah. Frank was a, 
I mean, Frank was as close to, when he mentioned Elgin and was thinking, what kind of player? But those guys were pro-like. And, and Jerry shut everybody down. Whoever he guarded, I mean, and I felt like I was a pretty good passer to, you know, to, to get things run, the ball moving around a bit. But right. we had some really, really strong players. And Bruce and, uh, put them I, in. And, and, and Jerry, uh, I, if I remember right, Jerry, I think you had 22 that, that game in the first game against uh, North Carolina, and Frank had like 18 or, or 19, and John the, the same. But I think Jerry was our leading scorer that first, that first game. But uh, we yeah. had a lot of pieces of a puzzle that fit. But uh, Frank and John could score on anybody, yeah. absolutely anybody. Well, I, you know, I think what's interesting, I think John, if John was playing today, John might, John had been a lottery pick. I mean, it, absolutely no question he'd be a lottery pick. Mm -hmm. All right, I have to, you got to indulge me for one second because you guys, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to become a fan here for a second. This is my 1974, you can't really see it, but this is a scrapbook oh. of the entire season. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know I'm a loser, and I and I get that, Mike Steele, because I know that's what you're thinking. But I do this for free. I know you're not. You got and I, I'm gonna buy you a Whopper coupon or a. I'll get, <laughs> you know I'll, do? I'll get you a free test drive in Twin City. That's what we're gonna do. All right, Jerry Nichols against Carolina, 22 points, yep. 11 of 15 from the field. Uh, I mean, looking here, uh, Frank had 18. He had eight out of 12. Why'd you miss four free free throws, Frank? I don't understand. Whoa. <laughs> John Garrett. Oh, oh, John Garrett had 15. Bruce had his usual nine points, 10, re 10 assists, and only seven rebounds. So he was a little short of his triple-double. Uh, but Satterfield had four in that game. I think a couple dunks that they weren't allowed. Yeah. But they were called <laughs> off. But, uh, and, and, of course, Tommy Scheffler, another guy that I would like to have gotten for this. Uh, Stephen, uh, his brother, was at the game last week. I didn't I didn't connect with Tom. All right, one other question. I'm going to go to Nate. Uh, Frank Kendrick, one of my favorite moments, because you guys were there in New York for two weeks, like you said. And I thought, man, if Frank Kendrick, I'm an eighth, I'm in, I think I'm in eighth grade. He's the coolest guy ever. And, and Frank and I <laughs> knew each other anyway because he, my parents uh, were friends and they, or they, and Bob King and they, Frank would come over for dinner and no, the Carpics did not give him any money. We never gave Bruce <laughs> money. Either. Not one cent, not one cent. But Frank, you, there was a picture, you think, in the New York Times or an AP photo of Frank Kendrick in a per with a purse. I mean, and he was oh, a sure. hip man. And I said, Frank Kendrick, I said, now I'm not, I'm, I'm this white eighth grader. I'm not going to wear a purse. I promise. But Frank, <laughs> you did it. And it was the coolest, it was the coolest thing ever. Is that true, Frank? Did you, did you have a purse? I know you had a, I know you had a car phone too. So, um, but tell, tell me about that. And just the fact that you, you brought some style to this basketball team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I was Frank. Oh, at that time, Walt Clyde Fraser was my. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Ah. yeah, there it is. Right. There it we is. Trying to do the things that Walt did, both on yeah. and off the court. <laughs> and uh, you, were, you, you looked phone. apart. Frank had a car phone because his phone got disconnected at the apartment because <laughs> he didn't pay the phone, so he just put it in the car. That's what happened. <laughs> That's, That's, what what really. That's a good one. All right, gonna, Nate, go ahead. Fire away, man. I want to know, guys. Uh, I can go start with uh, with Jerry. Uh, catch phrases or common phrases that the coaches used that you remember that stand out fifty years later. Things that uh, Coach Schaus or any of the assistant coaches said that you go, "Oh yeah, this one comes to mind." Oh wow. my goodness! Oh yeah, uh, that's a tough one. Well, we needed a basket. I'd always say, "Coach, give me the ball." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about rebound the damn ball? Uh, yeah, that's I a good one. Um, I, I, got I don't, I don't remember a lot of phrases that he used. I, I got a couple you might remember, and that was first class top shelf. We're going to be a first class group of guys. We're going to play top shelf basketball. Good. Yeah. yeah. I George. used that in business for the last 30, 40 years. My employees, because if you I, act that way and everything, you, you are going to be the best. John Garrett, did you have something else? I saw you pipe in. Do you have anything? Uh, uh, about 
what he'd say. Well, I was Don't just saying about that. I, I, I'll because we we would we'd be remiss in not having at least paying a one little bit of homage to the great Bob King, oh. who all of us, all of us uh, and he was really was he still he was kind of now had gone into administration by that yeah. time. Is that correct? In seventy four. Oh, yeah. But oh, I think yeah, three, most, yeah. three words that Bob King said to most of you, maybe not all of you, probably didn't have to say it to Dick Satterfield. He would say, yeah, he's the only words, one he didn't go have, well, he didn't, to he class. Didn't have, he didn't have to go to, to the park either. Go to yeah, class. Okay. That's right. Go, go to class. Go to class. That was another and Don't, I know don't that bring me good. another parking ticket. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he used to get so mad. And John and, John and Frank, I'd have to say. Oh, that. man. Or the yeah. worst, but don't bring me another damn parking ticket. Hey, hey, Mark, hey, hey, remember, yeah. Mark, remember when you'd go in the locker room and you'd go to the, get ready to go to practice and you'd look, and there'd be a note up there and say, see me. And then it would, be, and then it would have his initials, which I still send out emails with my initials because of Coach Bob. It'd be see me, see me, and like, how could he possibly know I missed that class <laughs> an hour ago? Yeah. There's oh, no yeah. internet, there's no, how could he know that? Yeah, oh, he was yeah. part of it. He was part hey, John, of it. He was John, part of the whole I'm thing. Gonna, John, I'm going to give you a little credit here. You may have had a few parking tickets, but you couldn't come close to Coach Kendrick. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, well, no, no. I couldn't. I couldn't. No, no, I didn't have that many. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm heading out back to Dallas. All right. Fly well, carefully. All right. Uh, and thanks for your help. In the Absolutely. Um, we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you this week. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. All right, guys. This has been a stone groove, as they say. We're going to chop, put this, we'll post it up. Uh, uh, I'm going to go around the room one last time for any parting shots. Uh, and if Frank, you know, Frank goes away, you can all, we can all shoot him at Frank, but no, you can Fact. parting comment uh, about this, about this team. And I'll start with uh, Randy Shields. Uh, you're up, my friend. What your what your what your your, your takeaway from this year, or what your thought is on this number one basketball team as well? Well, first I'm going to add on to Coach Bob King. We also had Coach Sexton, of course, who was one of our motivators, fun guys. We had uh, Coach uh, Dave Tony as well, and then uh, Coach George Faber was an assistant coach, uh, young assistant coach with us, of course. And we're hoping he can make the reunion this year because he's the only coach we got left. Yeah. Um, but uh, those coaches obviously added very much to our lives. We're great men, and they were good men. And I think they also helped us become good men. Uh, and we, as Bruce Parkinson mentioned earlier, when we uh, become our age, you appreciate other good men and what it took for them to be good men and to help us grow into good men. So that was a, a great thing to have at Purdue. And I think we continue that tradition to get back into your real question. I think Matt Painter obviously is, is building a lot of great men. He's building a dynasty of young men that uh, play together well, like we did. And I think uh, they have a very bright future, hopefully this year uh, in getting through the NCAA. Yeah. Bruce Parkinson, you're up next. Yeah, I, I would just say uh, the the rotation of the about the ten players that uh, Coach Schaus and I, I think it was in our personalities, but I think it was Coach Schaus and and uh, and the assistants that that Randy talked about, and and even Coach Bob, uh, who probably had a more of an influence, maybe uh, any anybody, but we understood our we understood our roles. And we wanted to be real in whatever that role was, Mike coming off the bench and being such a great passer and um, Bruce Rose coming off with Jerry need a blow and, and uh, chef. And uh, I mean, it, that doesn't happen very often. And I think we were uh, real, real fortunate to be happy with our roles and want, wanting to do that really, really well. One person, and I'm going to go to Mike Steele next, but I do want to make make sure, because you guys all, I think, to a person feel the same way, Gerald Tom and yes. Gerald's oh. health issues. Gerald also, Mike Steele, Dick Satterfield came in and did a great job in in, in, a, in a role, especially in, the, uh, in, the, in a number of different places, but in New York, certainly after Jerry's injury. 
uh, in playing role. But so did Gerald Thomas come in against Utah and made a couple really big plays. And, of course, everybody yep. loves Gerald Thomas and the great person he is. But I wanted to make sure because yeah. Gerald hoped could join us, but he's coming off some surgery. And and uh, mm. we uh, we appreciate him. And he has been a, been a good friend of Purdue basketball for a long time. And, of course, uh, the pride of Connersville, Indiana, was a very good Purdue basketball. He was a freshman on that team, right? So uh, playing mm. as nickname was what? Hop? And um, he could jump. So, but uh, Gerald, a great guy. Jump out of the gym. Yep. Yeah. See and your, it, your comments, my friend. You know, it's funny. Gerald Thomas was just one of the all time nicest guys and a great teammate. And it's, yep. uh, I know he's battling things, but he's, we all talked to him different times the last couple of weeks and his attitude's, you know, typical Gerald. <laughs> you know, he wants to know how everybody else is doing. Yeah. Uh, I think that this year's team, they truly, uh, and it's much harder in this day and age, but I think they truly know their role. I think, you know, as a former coach, I like to watch the guys on the bench and see how they react to different things. And this year's team, the guys appear to be just as excited when their teammates do something well as when they do it. And I think that because Zach works so hard and because Smith, uh, Braden is, is so unselfish, I, it's just been so much fun to watch. I mean, so, and I, I think that, one of the reasons that uh, that John Garrett didn't get as many tickets as Frank is because they couldn't catch John. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John, I couldn't help it. It was too God, I, we were going, we were building up to an emotional yeah. moment where I thought I was yeah. going to be in tears yeah. here in a second. I'm sorry, Way to go, Steely. Way to go. Oh, oh. Steely. <laughs> All right, John Garrett, you're on the floor. John, the floor is yours. Give us some wisdom, my Let friend, as we wrap this up. Let that dog die, my goodness gracious. <laughs> well, no, we just we had we had a good team. We we played well together. I think we understood each other. We got along on the court and off the court, which is I think is real important. I think you see some teams that 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 blow up. Some you'll watch and they'll they'll go a few games in the season, play well. And then all of a sudden you see that they fall apart and it's internal problems. Uh, yep. We got along on the court, off the court. Uh, I still remember going, where were we at in Minnesota or Wisconsin or something? We went to the movie and we saw Exorcist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and I didn't like it anymore. It went oh, we were awful, speaking. weren't we? The he, next was, thing. Yeah, he, was was he was speaking up for his pee jacket. I just I didn't have my pee jacket on my head. I just had my eyes closed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> great you know, great job. That might have been that was the night before <laughs> Michigan, though. The hunt and when you got beat badly up there, Man, we were off. That was Michigan. We were absolutely off. 111 to 84, but who's keeping score? Jerry Nichols, you're up, my friend. Okay. Um, hang on just a second. I'm plugging my phone in. <laughs> All right. We'll come back to you, Dick Satterfield. We'll I'll give you the floor. You know, I was uh I was thinking about something. Uh, there's a young man from Cincinnati named Raleigh Burgess. Yeah. 6'11 kid. He's committed to Purdue. And I said to him, why'd you choose Purdue? And he said, I chose Purdue because the guys I'd be playing with. And I thought they'd be my friends the rest of my life. And that's the way it is. Yeah. And I'm so glad. I can't wait to see everybody. Yeah. That is a true statement. You guys are a close oh, group. And that's why. Fr Jerry, you ready to talk? Or are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Can you hear All me? Right, go ahead. Fire away. <laughs> Give us some words of wisdom as we close it. Well said, though, Dick. I don't know how many words of wisdom I have, but, you know, the main thing was, again, uh, you know, our, our relationships. Uh, we're talking 50 years ago, but folks are still pretty close now today, and they always will be because, as far as I'm concerned, every one of my teammates is my brother. Uh, and I'll whatever happened need to be done. Uh, you know, some of the unsung heroes, um, other than the players and the coaches and everything like that, or the trainers and the doctors and stuff like that. Well, we may have lost Jerry you know, on the back end. Go ahead. So, uh, Doc Holmes and Dennis A lot of people Miller. contributing to what it's all about. Frank Kendrick, uh, what a better person to have the last word. I'm going to give the last word to Nate, but you're the second to last word. Give it to us, my friend. Oh, I appreciate it. I, I really do appreciate that. But I just wanted to, to say thank if you. If to you're the, lost, give it back. I have no idea where uh, I'm going. 
shared those uh, those moments of uh, happiness and uh, moments of of agony uh, and defeat, and most of all, being patient with one another and and uh, caring about one another. Like in the hard way. So to say, giving yourself up to the team. Uh, stop worrying about yourself and putting yourself first. In one point uh, nine miles. Giving yourself up to the team and and trying to trying to make the, the the university and the city in which you're in or town or whatever, you're trying to make everything better than what it was. And uh, we got a lot we have a lot of nice things to build on. And today in this world there's a lot to build on. And but you're always gonna have a few nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, All right, Dave so, Barrett, you were born six years later than this group, but uh, what did you learn today from listening to these guys uh, talk about their great season? Well, I, the thing that uh, comes to mind, Alan, and we're looking forward to seeing all you guys for Chalk Talk and Spurgeon Club this weekend to celebrate you, but I, I think about uh, you know, Matt and Elliot uh, going through and redoing all the banners and Mackie when there was the renovation and and wanting your guys' 74 NIT banner right up there with all the key banners in Purdue basketball yeah, history. Right. And you guys all know uh, Coach Painter to be a basketball historian, but, you know, the team you're seeing this year has been built on top of a foundation that you guys are a big part of. So just thanks for being here and, and uh, you're a big part of Purdue basketball and its history and, and uh, that's foundational to what's going on now. So great to be with you. Yes. Great. Thank you, Nader. Couldn't be happy. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for your time. You guys all, I think every person in this room, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing for a long period of time, and uh, you guys have always been grateful, not only to us at Golden Black, but also uh, sharing your basketball knowledge uh, has always been great to, for me to to be able to get. To, so safe travels to, to West Lafayette for this weekend. I think it's going to be a balmy. I don't think it'll be maybe a balmy 35 degrees, but I think this weather will be fine for your travels and uh, and you know tomorrow night with the uh, men's basketball at nebraska those games are dangerous so uh, yeah. we'll all be a little bit nervous about that but uh, uh from that standpoint if you're a purdue fan you will be but uh, uh it will be you got if you haven't been in Mackey this year I don't know how it gets better every year, but it's pretty darn good in there right now. And uh, you will have a lot of fun on Sunday, Saturday afternoon when Penn State comes calling. And you guys will be the stars of the show, at least at uh, being celebrated your great legacy and what you've done for Purdue basketball. So thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks also to our good friends at, oh, at to the thing. City Dodge as well. Frank, go ahead. You can have another last one. Word. Before you go, uh, for them to talk about the palestra, I heard them talking about that Penn State game and talk about the Palestra. They, we uh, we need to come out and show them uh, when you start talking basketball, you don't start uh, with us being anything less than first. Yeah, th that arena is – you guys had a lot to do with it and saw that grow it, uh, and we're still foundational, but it has remained that way now for 56 Ooh. years. Yeah, uh, it is. It has been unbelievable. And, and, and if you haven't been there, John Garrett, you, know, the you were in the building. But uh, when you come this weekend, you'll have a lot of fun. So, guys, have a great rest of the week. Safe travels. Thanks again to Twin City Dodge. And uh, thanks to all of you for watching and, and uh, enjoying our Monday night memories and all the somewhat truths that you heard here for the last hour. <laughs> uh, they were there. Sir. We do not fact check this show, nor will we ever fact that check this show, but that's what makes it fun. But guys, thanks again for sharing your, your great math all kinds of Thanks, Alan. Yeah.